Chair. Um, welcome back, Dr. Uh, Mr. Patterson. So, the, the budget's gone in a couple of different directions. You've lost quite a lot over the forward estimates, $27.6 million to your research funding, but then a $45 million increase over five years to send spent fuel assemblies to the US for processing and storage. Um, I'm curious to know uh, whether, why that's such a large increase. What, what is going on there that required that increase in funding? Thank you very much, Senator, and thank you for welcoming me back. Um, uh, the 45 million uh, is for the spent fuel return to the United States, which is a program that we entered into in consultation uh, with the US government, where they will uh, take back the uh, fuel from the Opal reactor that is utilized up until the end of May 2016. The great benefit of this scheme is uh, that because of the take back program, which was associated with us building a reactor that operates on low enriched uranium and therefore doesn't uh, constitute the uh, risk that uh, is uh, attendant to reactors that operate on highly enriched uranium, uh, we have the great benefit that when we've sent this uh, spent fuel back to the United States, uh, there will be no requirement for uh, the waste material that's associated with that fuel to be returned to Australia. Yep. So the benefit of the program is very high. Um, the cost effectiveness of the program, I think, is well established, and the uh, $45 million is the envelope that is required to complete all of the actions uh, in relation to that spent fuel return. Okay. Um so what, what's the timing of the first propose, proposed shipment to the United States? And can you just give us some ideas on how many shipments are planned, what number of fuel assemblies are involved, and by the end of that forward estimates period or by the end of that $45 million worth of expenditure, uh, has everything been transferred to the United States apart from the current, current fuel inventory of the reactor? Thank you, Senator. I'll take the, the details uh, on notice so we can provide you a full account. But at present, we are anticipating two shipments. The detailed dates of those shipments are not absolutely finalised, okay. um, uh, but they would uh, be completed um, by the end of 2019. So the forward estimates would envisage two shipments. So it's $22.5 million per shipment of spent fuel. That's correct, yes. Although that's in some ways an oversimplification because there's planning and, and, and other sure. arrangements that people put in. We haven't done one of these before, have we, from Opal? We, we have certainly uh, shipped spent fuel around uh, the world from the high fire days, but this mm. will be the first one from Opal, from Opal and we'll deal with the fuel from initiation of operations uh, through until May 2016. Thank you. If you could just maybe on notice provide <coughs> for us your indicative timetables and what kind of volumes are involved. Where does it go to in the United States and what's the plan for management there? The, it, uh, it is returned to the specialised facilities in the United States. We'll provide the details on notice. You and then know, You don't know at, at the table where it's going to? Is it one of the US reprocessing plants or is it just for dry storage? I, I imagine uh, that uh, those uh, details will be in their hands and I don't have it to hand at the moment, but we'll provide it on notice. Yeah, if you could, thank you. I've just not seen anything in the public domain. Um, what capacity will there be in the Opal service pool following the conclusion of this returns arrangement? The capacity in the uh, Opal service uh, pool uh, will be for a similar period of operation. Um, uh, that is of the order of 10 years. Okay. So you're just buying yourself another 10 years, kind of in a rolling? Well, I wouldn't uh, characterise it that way, Senator. The management of fuel over the life cycle of a reactor is a well understood uh, discipline and it your uh, spent fuel accumulates in the, in the holding pool. It is then uh, moved into other forms of storage and then it's taken for appropriate reprocessing or disposition by some other means. Yeah, it, it all sounds so clinical and efficient when you put it like that. Um, how long does the spent nuclear fuel return arrangement remain valid for with the US? What's the expiry date of the agreement? The current agreement expires uh, in May 2016. Okay, so that would be on the conclusion of your second dispatch of fuel? No, it would be on the, the, the fuel used up to that time as the fuel that we can return. Uh, May 2016. And what's yep. going to happen after that? The reactor's got a 30 or 40 year lifespan, doesn't it? That's correct. So the uh, arrangements after that would be to follow the uh, pattern of use of uh, the high fire reactor, which would be to return uh, the fuel um, to uh, people who would uh, reprocess it and then uh, the associated uh, residual waste would be returned to Australia. 
So that's new. My understanding, and I thought you've given us evidence at the table before, that um, the fuel is contracted for return to the United States when it's been burned up for the life of the reactor. Now you're telling us that that only prevails till 2016, and then it's our liability. The, um, my understanding is that it has always been a matter of record that the US take back program would be concluded in May 2016. Okay. I'm not, I'm not insinuating that you've misled us in any way, but I'm surprised to hear. So from 2016, what's the expected closure or, or lifespan of the reactor? How long will we have to look <coughs> after waste post 2016? The design life of the reactor is 40 years. So how many years post 2016 is that? Um, that's about 30 years. So 10 years worth of the fuel is returned to the US, either for reprocessing or dry storage. 30 years worth of that fuel liability would be reprocessed and then returned to Australia? That is one of the disposition pathways. We obviously will keep uh, as much optionality as we can within those pathways. And so we don't actually know. We've built another nuclear reactor with no idea what its long-term fuel management uh, solution is going to be. The it's been happening for 60 years and we've just done it again. I don't believe that's a fair characterisation of the situation. The fuel management strategy and the waste management strategy is well understood. Um, and is planned in the appropriate timescale. How many high-level radioactive waste dumps are there operating in the United States for permanent long-term storage of this, of this material? You'll find the answer is none. I believe that uh, the disposition of, uh, of research reactor fuel uh, is well within the capabilities um, uh, of our partners across the world, which includes uh, the United States. So just finally, I'm just getting the wind-up from the chair. Um, increase of $31.6 million over four years to operate Opal at full capacity. What's going on with what capacity have you been operating at and why that sudden increase in the budget beyond your normal operating budget? Thank you, Senator. Um, Senator, the uh, Opal reactor had been operating um, under uh, our core funding plus a lapsing uh, NPP. Uh, of, uh, a lapsing uh, NPP. Um, when the NPP lapsed, uh, we uh, had an additional um, annual cycle of funding and during the course of that period, we worked with our department and with the central agencies uh, to plan the forward spending pattern uh, that is uh, encapsulated in this measure. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of words, I'm not understanding any of them. What capacity have you been operating at? Uh, we've been operating the reactor at the capacity that we will continue to operate it. This is not an expansion, this is a continuation. So let me just go back to the budget papers. We might need more for these question. folks, either if whether we could extend the time now or in future, future well, the, budget estimate sessions. Well, the, the uh, timetable as it stands is one that was being developed by the opposition parties. Uh, we've, agreed, we've agreed to everything that was asked. I cannot accept I've just taken advice from the Secretariat. Um, well, I might have it, taken it is, advice from the, the Secretariat. The opposition, the opposition parties have not, not agreed to this. Individuals may well have, but senators at any time are entitled to ask questions. There's nothing in the standing orders to prevent us changing the timetable. Whatever well, timetable you've issued, yeah. at well, best, is indicative. That's at really best. The yeah, well, um, with the concurrence of the committee, we can look at doing that. But, yeah. but the timetable that we are operating off today, as I indicated in my opening statement, um, and that is what we will largely agree to, unless Mr. with the Chair. concurrence of the committee we change it, was developed. No, um, well, and, and it was right. as a rather, timetable that's put rather forward. Rather than arguing over it, could yes. we just but, but, you know, but, could we extend yes. just a couple of minutes? I don't know whether Senator Carr's got any well, more. It's going to eat into CSIRO if you do, and I think there's a lot of questions well, for I've got plenty of questions for the CSIRO. Exactly. I think Senator Carr was It may well be that this is a matter we've got to discuss on the floor of the chamber, because this has now happened too often, with the government taking up time with lots and lots of Dorothys and preventing op uh, opposition senators and crossbench senators well, from asking questions. Yeah. For the record, uh, the government's had six minutes, you had 13, and Senator Ludlam's currently had nine. 13, Can I just finish 13 this? minutes. Uh, 13 minutes to question an incredibly important agency. You're saying that's adequate? Well, th th there's a total of 30 minutes, and that is what was put forward by the opposition and what was it agreed to by the government. Wasn't put forward by the opposition. The, the timetable is the opposition's timetable. The government agreed to everything that was requested. All right, can I just conclude this yeah, sort of one line? Final I don't question, to, then we'll move into the CSIRO. I CSIRO. certainly don't want to chew into the time, too much of the time for CSIRO. Um, so, Dr. Patterson, if just, just go through this. Your budget papers say $31.6 million uh, to run the research reactor at full capacity. So I shouldn't take that to read that that's an increase in output or anything along those lines. 
No, I think it's, it's, it is the uh, re-baselining of the funding for consistent and, and, and ongoing operations. When you say re-baselining, is that another way of saying increasing? No, the original baseline was set by the operations of the high fire reactor, which is, had different capacities and different scope. And it was always intended that once we had some operational experience that we would uh, bring forward the uh, funding envelope that's required to operate the reactor. How much of an increase does that re-baselining represent? Uh, in terms of an, an overall increase, I'll provide that on, on uh, notice. Um, but the major drivers have been electricity cost and fuel cost. Weren't we contracted to the United States government to provide fuel at a certain cost? How come that's gone up? No, our fuel supply is, comes from France, um, and uh, they, that is uh, supplied on a commercial basis from a commercial company. Okay. All right. um, I'll leave it there. Can okay, you just provide you. on notice, break out your, just break out the different components, if you could, just disaggregate where those figures have come from that okay. increases. Thanks, Chair, for your... Thank you.